What is your most NSFW story about walking in on someone doing the dirty or being walked in on? Story 1. I was about 18 or so and I was hooking up with my stepsister's friend when my dad knocked on my door. Me and my friend stop and my dad pops his head in and asks if I'm going anywhere tomorrow. I reply no and then he leaves. So the next day I asked him what all of that was about and he replied, well, I heard what was going on and I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't your stepsister. Uh, thanks, Dad. Goes in line with that old saying of trust but verify. Nothing wrong with a good dad being protective and just making sure that his son isn't up to no good with some forbidden fruit. Goes to show you, though, that the dad has probably been wondering about this possibility for a while, and then once he heard his son getting busy, he just wanted to make sure that his worst fears weren't realized. Story 2. I was doing the dirty with my high school girlfriend at the time, and her parents were so strict so we took my car behind a golf course near her house. She was facing back and I was facing forward and she stops and it's like the police are here. I turned around and sure enough, a cop's lights were flashing. So I hopped into the driver's seat, hold up my pants while my girlfriend was trying to get her pants back on in the back. The cop taps on the window and says, what are you doing? My immediate response was, uh, just, just having some fun. He took my ID and asked my story to make sure nothing sketchy was going on. And ultimately he handed back my ID and said, you guys have to find a better place. It's the middle of the day, and that's how I lost my virginity. Story 3. The only time I've walked in on anything, but this is a doozy. I went to tell my brother that a classmate of ours had passed away. I knocked on his door and received no answer, which is not unusual because he's a heavy sleeper, but I decided I ought to go ahead and wake him up to tell him. And he wasn't sleeping, he was jacking off to anime with his headphones on. I managed to leave without him noticing, since his back was to me, but I still saw way more than I ever needed to. And now I can't remember our past classmate without thinking about my brother jacking it to anime. Story four. In my teens, my grandparents had a hot tub that was inside an enclosed sunroom. The door from their bedroom opened right next to where it was situated. So I'm balls deep in my girlfriend and working on her right boob. And the door about two feet away opens and I make eye contact with my grandpa just as I'm licking my girlfriend's nipple. He coughs and says, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, and closes the door. Grandpa was chill AF. Grandpa was 100% that chill because he has definitely gotten down with grandma in that same hot tub. He probably cracked a little smile after he left and said, that's my grandson, boy." And two days later, he peacefully passes away in his sleep, probably, after being completely content with how proud he is with his stallion of a grandson keeping up the tradition of doing the dirty in hot tubs. Bravo. Story 5. Ex-girlfriend when I was young had a clever little trick for stealth adult time. She had a pair of tights with the crotch ripped out, and she wore them under a skirt when I would come over for a visit. She brought a blanket down to the basement den, put a movie on, and covered us up. Then she reached back, fished my willy out of my pants, and guided it home while we were supposedly innocently snuggling on the couch and watching Willow. She even pre-stashed a cleanup towel under the couch cushions before I arrived. Her mom came down the stairs many times to check on us, saying things like, you kids okay, need anything? And there I was, balls deep in sweet, slippery, tingling ecstasy, my heart pounding as I tried to look calm and cool. Girlfriend, who'd been moaning and grinding herself on me a few moments before, was cool as a cucumber. No thanks, mom, we're good. And she actually squeezed on me a few times while talking to her. I'm pretty sure she got off on the danger somehow. If her mom ever told us to get up right now and come with her, we'd be so busted. But it never happened. Story 6. So one fine summer afternoon, my husband and I were sitting in the backyard having some drinks, and as one does, I was getting a bit frisky. So I went into the house to make another pitcher of drinks and came back out in my birthday suit. Husband took the hint and we proceeded to get it on on a lawn chair. I was on top of him facing the house when all of a sudden the patio door slides open and there stands my mother-in-law. Now, a normal person would be embarrassed about barging into someone's house and seeing them doing the deed, but not my mother-in-law. She just stands there laughing her butt off. I jumped up, grabbed the closest thing to cover up, which happened to be this disgusting kiddie pool that we have for the dog. My husband still doesn't know what is going on and he's just standing there at full mast, shorts around his ankles, wondering why I'm flopping around trying to roll myself up in the dog pool. Finally, she sees his mother, puts back on his shorts at light speed, and starts laughing at me. 
I ended up walking through my house wrapped in the dog pool to collect my clothes and get dressed. I am mostly cracking up at the fact that she said my husband took the hint when she walked back into the backyard in her birthday suit. Like, how else was that guy supposed to interpret his wife coming back with drinks while being completely naked? What other possible reason could she have for doing this? Did she just spill the entire kitchen on her clothes and then couldn't be bothered to change? Or maybe she suddenly felt the need to become a nudist. So yeah, I'm not surprised that he got the hint, people. Story 7. When I was a teen, my girlfriend at the time's mom walked in while I was under the covers going down on her. Not knowing what to do or say, I, I just stayed there hiding until she finished her conversation with her daughter, hoping I wouldn't be noticed. However, in the panic, I failed to realize that my feet had been sticking out at the end of the bed the whole time. Needless to say, I was mortified and could hardly face my girlfriend's parents afterwards, although in the end, she was pretty all right about it and let me off pretty easily, only making a few jokes before conveniently forgetting what had ever happened. Story 8. My high school girlfriend was giving me my first BJ. We were in my room and she was laying down and wanted me to straddle her face while she did the deed. The door was next to the headboard which I was facing, and my mom walks in to see if we want dinner and, well, she saw everything. Junk in the mouth, me on top of this poor girl. She slams the door and didn't let us back in my room forever. Story 9. We were getting our walls painted back when I was 14 years old, so two rooms were closed out. There were three painters, two men, and a woman. Mom asked me to give the painters some coffee and snacks, so I entered the room to see one of the guys going hard on the lady, like Chewbacca style. The other guy was painting like his life depended on it, and I was never the same since. The youngster in me obviously knew what was going on, but was too embarrassed to tell mom. So naturally, I just went to my room and fapped my brains out. Can someone in the comments explain what you think Chewbacca style means or implies? For some reason, I keep having thoughts of both the guy and the woman just being really hairy, or maybe just one of them is hairy. I suppose this could also mean that they were making some really Chewy-esque noises while getting down. And that poor other painter, he was so dedicated to the work that he didn't even want to leave. Either that, or maybe he was about to tag in. Story 10. Not exactly during the deed, but I was 16 and my girlfriend was 15. Over at her house to lose my V-card while her parents were gone. She sneaks me into the garage and tells me to wait a minute and then sneak into her room. So I count to 60, step into her house, and run directly into her 13-year-old snitch of a brother. She plays it off like I came to borrow something, shoves a CD in my hand, and I leave. So then five minutes later, she brings me from the garage to the bedroom. I get her shirt and bra off for the first time, and her mom calls and says she'll be home early in five minutes. I have never booked it so fast or been blue-balled so badly. I ended up having to wait like two more weeks. Story 11. Back when I was a senior in high school, around 1996 or 97, I went to homecoming with my best friend's stepsister. His dad was married to her mom, and she had just moved in with them less than a year prior. My friend and I double-dated with his stepsister and her best friend, and nothing ever happened between us two. It was just a date. So, fast forward to New Year's Eve, and I'm at my friend's house shooting pool, playing darts, etc., and his stepsister was there with a few of her friends as well. The night winds down, and I end up in the living room watching TV, and I decided it's time for bed, and I would usually sleep in my friend's bed while he took the couch. So I waltz into his room, and it's dark, and I hear the sounds of people making love. Then it stops. He says, Duck Munch, is that you? And I say, oh yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. He continues on, and I just go to the living room, and then I get up after a few minutes to get some water, and his door opens. And his stepsister walks out, half-dressed, and was like, oh. And then she ran to her room. So he was banging his stepsister. He came clean to me and said he was sleeping with her, and he ended up proposing to this girl, and she said yes. So during prom, they ended up going, and I had my own date. And then later in the evening, my friend's first cousin asked my friend's stepsister, now fiancé, if she wants to dance. My friends are okay with it, obviously, because it's his cousin. So they dance kind of far away from my friend and I, who are talking, and we look over and catch his first cousin and his stepsister slash fiance making out on the dance floor. It was at that point that I was done. And it was also at that moment that this guy realized that he needed to move out of Hickville and find some modern civilization where they date like normal people. And all joking aside, it definitely sounds like a very small town. If the best that you can do 
is your stepsisters and your cousins. You all need to expand that dating pool a little bit and at least start dating into the next county or something. Story 12. So this story takes place about 10 years ago. I was having a house party at my mother's place, as you do, and this one girl was there, and we'd been circling each other for a while. And at some point, we went upstairs to my room to bang. So sometime later, some of my friends figure that we're missing, decide to go looking for us upstairs to mess with us. They open the door to my room, turn on the light, and here we are, her on top of me, and the covers somewhat covering us, thankfully. I quickly go over my options. I figure that I can't physically remove them from my room because I'm a manlet, and I figure my only defense is making it too awkward for them to stay in the room. So, I don't stop pumping. The leader of that clique of friends is also talking to me, so I figure, again, best bet is to just talk to him like normal and make it too awkward for him to go on. And yes, I wasn't exactly sober. After a couple seconds of it and a couple sentences exchanged, I realize I'm making full-on eye contact with my buddy while talking to him and still pumping. And so I stopped. They left rapidly after that, and I guess the whole awkwardness of the situation caught up to them right after it caught up to me. And we didn't resume banging after that. Story 13. Back in college when I was visiting my then-boyfriend, now husband, at his fraternity house, we were getting down with the get-down when we were suddenly showered with drywall and insulation and greeted by two chubby legs protruding from the ceiling. Turns out that some of the brothers had gotten drunk and thought it would be a good idea to explore the attic. The rest of the brothers stormed into the room to see if their fallen comrade was okay. So there I was, naked, covered in fiberglass insulation, putting on an unintended show for some of the guys who would later be in my wedding party. Story 14. When I was a freshman in high school, I had my first serious girlfriend, and we were both new to doing the deed. Our parents were not the type to let us just do whatever we wanted, and this included doing the deed. So we had to improvise and find a place that we could get down when our parents were at home, and that wasn't either of our houses. So we resorted to doing it in public places. We would do it almost anywhere. We found a quiet and secluded spot. And I know that's not a good idea and that you can get charged with some pretty serious bad crimes if caught by someone who actually cares, but we weren't bothered by this fact because we were fueled by our hormones. We went about a whole year of using the public method and never got caught. Well, one chilly Saturday afternoon, our usual spot at our local university center was closed by Christmas break, so we had to find somewhere else to get down at. Now, we wander around the downtown area of our city until finally, we find this old tunnel that looks like it was intended to be an overflow tunnel that empties into a small creek when it rains. Our city has some flooding problems. So we walk a ways into this tunnel and then lay our jackets down onto a little makeshift bed and get down to it. Everything's going great for about six minutes. And then I catch a glance past my girlfriend and notice a man squatting down at the entrance of the tunnel, recording us with his cell phone. I instantly froze and went soft and whispered that someone was watching us. My girlfriend quickly pulled her pants back up and we snatched up our jackets and took off into the darkness of the tunnel. We were way too mortified to just walk back out the way that we came, and with that dude standing there. So we walked through these wet and dark tunnels for about 15 minutes until we came out of the other side, three quarters of a mile across downtown. After that, we both agreed that we're not having fun in tunnels anymore. Prepare yourself, guys, because now your little p that was recorded has now been shared amongst the entire homeless tunnel network. Within minutes, all the fapping has occurred as your video gets shared and reused all over and over again. And I bet if your parents knew what great lengths you would go to to get frisky, maybe they would prefer actually just letting it happen in their house. I mean, who would want their kid doing the dirty in an old tunnel with a creepy dude watching, right? Story 15. I lived with my girlfriend and her grandmother for a time, and we lived in a furnished basement with our own area. So one morning, we're going at it. And you know, like, really going at it. Propped up on the pillows, grabbing stuff for leverage, you know. And well, her grandma walks into our room, no warning whatsoever, and we're all so in shock. I freeze like a deer while balls deep, and her grandma sheepishly asks if either one of us will need a ride to work later. We said, no thank you, and we did, but not anymore. Later on, her grandma pulled me aside to tell me that she wasn't comfortable with us having adult time under her roof. And I politely reminded her that we were like 20 years old and in a three-year relationship. And I was sorry that it made her uncomfortable, but she had no right to insist on something like that. We paid our rent and had a whole private living space. 
and that we expect her to treat our privacy with a little bit more respect. And she actually took that very well, and that was the end of it. Story 16. Not during the act, but after doing the deed, we were still naked. We were in my room with the door shut, and she was in bed, and I was in my chair in front of my keyboard and computer. I started playing Build Me Up Buttercup and singing it to her. While my friend heard this, and being that it's the best sing-along song ever, he came up to my door singing and knocked if he could come in and sing with me. I said, do not come in, and of course he only heard, come in. So my roommate walked in on me, naked on my chair, playing piano, and my girlfriend, naked on my bed. The worst part about it was that he didn't recognize the situation and stayed in there for a solid minute, confused as to why we told him to come in when we were naked. That would have been made even more awkward if after the roommate realized those two were naked, that he thought he would join in. He strips off all of his clothes, belting out the lines from the song, just freeballing it, and living his best life. I mean, it makes sense, I guess, because what is better than singing a great song with friends? Singing that song naked, of course. Story 17. Was at a party and my friend and I went upstairs into one of the bedrooms to get down. I knew the host and she said it was fine to use one of the rooms since no one would be going upstairs anyway. A different friend of ours was really drunk and decided to sneak upstairs, open the door while we were going at it, and throw pizza crust at us so we could stop and come back and join the party. Eventually he realized we weren't paying attention to him so he left. I didn't even notice how many pizza crusts he threw until we were done and saw like 15 of them scattered all around the room. Story 18 was seeing a woman a couple of years ago who was recently divorced with teenage kids. So I went to her house one evening after her daughter left for some sort of practice. So we started getting frisky on the couch and we were going full throttle when her 17-year-old daughter walked through the front door announcing practice was canceled. She wouldn't look me in the eye for quite some time after that. Story 19. I was staying at my girlfriend's parents' house who were out of town. We got blasted at a bar, caught a ride home, and then go to her parents' room to sleep. So obviously, the sleep turned into sexy time. Being drunk, we did not clean our mess up. We just passed out. And so the next morning, her mom comes home early and walks into the room. She walked into both of us naked on her bed with several used condoms on the floor. I'm just staring at her like, there's literally nothing I can say right now that would be okay. And she just goes, oh, don't worry, sweetie. I told her y'all could use our bed. And she walks into the bathroom, grabs something, leaves, and then says, have fun. And I'd never been more confused in my life. That apparently played out much differently than originally thought by that guy. But hey, I appreciate parents who aren't so strict that they drive their kids to get frisky somewhere dangerous or at a dirty motel or something. This mom clearly knew that they were going to go do it anyway, so it might as well happen under your roof so that you can keep an eye on them and make them feel comfortable. They are far more likely to use protection and be safe that way anyway. What a cool mom.